Okay. Ah, there go the dogs. Right, um, I thought today we, we'll move on to a new poem today, I thought, yes, uh, that ties in with what we're doing. So we're going to look at start looking at my last duchess today. Okay. Um, Sir, yes. Have we already done my last duchess last year? I think I think we might have done last year. Yeah, I think we might have done. Um, but I'm just going to going to remind you because obviously, um, hopefully, hopefully, um, if you can remember it, it should begin to um, uh, come back to you quite readily, and we should go through this on a fairly rapid pace. Um, did you listen to Alfred Molina reading the poem? As requested. I don't think so. oh. Oh. Dear, oh dear. Um, right, let's see. Well, let's. What is that? So I'm just going to. Will that work? Is it going to allow me to work? Uh, oh, I'll, I'll mean I'll have to share my window again. I am going to go back to that. Do, do, do. Go back to that. Um, right, what I'd like you to do for me now, yeah? Is I'd like you just on your own, and it'll only take you about sort of five minutes or so. I want you to read through my last duchess to yourselves right now. Um, and then I want you to jot down your initial reaction to this as a poem. Okay. Um, it might be that you want to just pull out a phrase, an image for the poem that really speaks to you, and you think, oh, that that's that's really what this is all about. Be a line that really chills you to the bone, that sort of thing, or it might be an image that you think is beautifully poetic, whatever it is, or it may be that this poem throws up questions. You think, well, what is going on here? What is this all about? Um, so I want you to read through and then just note your initial reaction on your one note. And I say, I'll give you right, just going on to 10 to 12. If I give you to 12 o'clock, just stay on the lesson, don't drop out or anything like that. If you just stay on the lesson. Um, read it through and then note down your initial reaction and we'll all begin to discuss at 12 o'clock. OK. I'll take your silence as a yes. Yeah. <laughs> right. OK, on you go.
Okay, shall we uh, begin the feedback? Um, can I just ask, was that you, Clem, that's done the annotation on the cup and I have drawn for you? Yeah. <laughs> that's great. That's really neat because it's made my page look really nice and tidy. Do you want to do my annotations throughout the whole lesson? So you're on my OneNote. Am I? I thought it was yeah. a OneNote. <laughs> that's why it came up. I had a double mm -hmm. check. Oh, my apologies. Oh, I am. Okay. <laughs> I am. That's why I, I thought, who's, who's drawing on my one note? That's really kind of them. Right, I'll get on to mine now. Yeah. Thank oh, you. <laughs> my apologies. How, how dare I, Clem? Eh? <laughs> right. Oh, dear. Well, we're going to start with you then, Eddie. Anyway, Hang on. Because that, that's a really good point that you made, uh, as, everybody, as everybody will have seen. That was very polite of you about not to say, get off my page. Uh, right. <laughs> so, as you've obviously all probably seen, um, Clem did select the curtain I have drawn for you. And in case nobody was not watching there, Clem, do you want to just take us through why you, you thought that was a really interesting line, um, what, what you got from it? Um, it's because it's like he has, like, even though she can't do anything now because she's passed away, yep. he has control over everything that like happens to that painting so he can hide her yeah distance or he can uncover her and like show off yeah things. very good yeah i mean it's this idea you know he had control over her in life but yeah he still has that control over her, even in death um you know he decides everything Um, does do all that. It makes her seem what, um, if we think about it, um, obviously it's, it's a painting on a wall, Clem. Um, you might remember from the last time, because I'm pretty sure we'd have brought this up when we discussed it the first time around. Um, it's almost as if this is what on his wall. Think about nobility, and they used to, they might put things like stags' heads and any other animal that they've shot on a wall. What would that be regarded as? Yeah, yeah. And I'm sure we'll all be fit from, from, familiar with the phrase, you know, trophy wife, that sort of thing in such society. So that's good. Good beginning. Thank you, Clem. Um, right, next, John, what did you choose? Uh, on the first line, when it says, that's my last purchase. Yep. Um, it's yeah. a bit like what Clem said with like the trophy, but he, like he's it's he's, he's claimed uh, her, and he's like it's he's really possessive. Yes, very good. Yeah, he's claimed her like that. Good, yeah, it's all of that. And as you say, it's the use of the personal pronoun. Yeah, which gives a, a, that sense of ownership. You know, it's my last duchess. Um, anybody want to add anything else into that? You know, that's my last duchess. What does that su also suggest? I'm fine that there's more than one. You won't get another one. Yeah, there's more than one. Good. Thank you, John. Moving swiftly on, Hugh, 
What about you? Well, I was going to say that it was maybe it was his wife that was dead. She most certainly is. Yeah, yeah. She, she most certainly is dead. Yeah. Yeah, I, I couldn't really think of anything else. No, nothing else, Hughes? Not really. That's a bit underwhelming, isn't it? Is there yeah. no line? No, no I line can think of something. Sorry? 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 I can think of something. Right, I'll come back to you. So I want you to try and choose a line or an image from the poem that you think is really, that's powerful. That really leaps out at me. That makes me, um, you know, take notice. Yeah? Uh, Penny, what about you? What did you select? Um, I selected the question that was like, Wilt, please, you look. The one where you like, will you still uh, look at her? Yeah, yeah. Hang on, I'll just get that. The highlighter. Uh, da, da, da. Yeah, line five. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because, yeah. I don't know, it sounds a bit like forceful. It does, doesn't it? Now, he's asking a question, isn't he? Mm -hmm. But... Is it really a what sort of question is it? I, I can't I say rhetorical, but I'm not sure. Uh, say, that, say that again, Penny. Sorry, I don't know. It was like rhetorical. Oh, it most definitely it's is. Kind of like yeah. Yeah. You, you, you can't really say no. Yeah. Who else chipped in there? I think you might have been seeing the same thing in the background. That was me. Sorry. No, that's no, okay. And I just wanted to double check because I think because the two voices overlap there. So I think I just wanted to double check. And you're both right there. Yeah, I mean, it, it it's phrased, yeah, very much. There's a question. Oops. But it's clearly, as you both say, you know, because it's a rhetorical question, it clearly is a command. Yeah, so it's that idea. And again, this is a thing that the the the, the persona of the, the, the Duke does throughout this whole uh, uh, this poem. Good. And else you wanted to add to that point, um Penny? Not really. No, that's okay. Anybody else want to pick up on anything out of that uh, phrase that, that Penny's taken from the, the poem? It's almost like he's saying to people, can you please come and look at like my latest? Like It's like when someone gets the newest phone, like, people are like, oh my God, let me see. But instead he's like, people come and look at my newest thing. Yeah, again at my at my newest trophy. Yeah, that 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 sort of idea. And it's the other thing as well is it's really specific, isn't it? You've been told exactly what to do. You you know look at her. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and, 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 and just the, the, the sharp, the direct commands here. Okay, good. Um, Charlotte, do you want to give us the line that you've maybe taken from the poem, please? Um, yeah, I've got two, but they're basically the same thing. Right. Um, how he references as if she were alive, and he says it twice. Like, ah, yeah. it, even though we know she's not alive anymore, he said it twice as if he's got something to do with it. Like, it makes him look guilty. Yeah, good, good, good. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's this idea, isn't it? It's pretends, it's, it's mimicking life, yeah? Roop. Uh, that's right, that's okay. Um, and boom. Yeah, and it's the first sort of sense, yeah, that maybe we can begin to get um, about guilt here as well. Very much so as well. I mean, it's that case that, you know, if she were alive, it's almost like he has control of what over her. Remember, we've talked about it again from John, you know, that's my last duchess, you know, it's that idea that he 
he has con complete control. Um, I'm sorry, it was the first one that Clem said about the cut my drum for you. He's that complete control over who sees her, when they see her, if they see her, that sort of thing. Um, with John, we had it was about ownership um, of her as well. You know, it's my, my last duchess. With this here, it's as if she were alive. Think about this issue of power that we've got within all of these poems. And, and again, think back to what we discussed with Ozymandias and, and the characteristics that we said that the, the ruler Ozymandias seemed to have. Does the Duke appear to have any similar characteristics here to Ozymandias? What does he appear to have power over? He's got arrogance. Oh, he's, he's got arrogance by the bucket load, hasn't he? Yeah. And it comes to quite a, like, cross is quite a misogynist. Oh, like, oh yeah. He, he most, uh, yeah, definitely is. We'll come back to those um, a little bit later. So? Yes. And with the whole possessive kind of theme to the poem, yeah. could you say that now she's dead, he's done it purposely so he can have that trust in her and finally control this relationship that was oh, yeah. how it oh. should have been? Oh, that is it in a nutshell, Clem, quite right. And if he decides whether she lives or dies, what type of power is he taking to himself? I think God. Yeah, isn't it? Yeah. It's like an after an afterlife power as well as a before like an actual life power. Whoops. Yeah, yeah. It's all of these things. Like divine power. Sorry? Would it be like divine power? Like he yeah, thinks he has yeah. divine power. It would be. Um, I think it was clever said earlier on, yeah, godlike power. And thank you, RS department. John, good to see you there, bringing in the divinity. I finally got one right, sir. <laughs> see, see, you do know your RS. You know, it's almost like he's decided when she lives, when she dies. And even in death, you know, he's saying, oh, it looks like she's still alive, such a thing. But uh, again, all of these come in here. Um, and so we do begin to know uh, we can make links here. Oops. I'll put this one in red. You know, it is that idea, as a ruler, we, we got that idea about Ozymandias, that's the type of ruler that he was. You like to think that he had that power of, 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 of complete and utter power, so that godlike complex coming with them. OK, good. Thank you. Oliver, over to you now. What did you select? Um, I didn't select like a particular, like a quote in particular. Mm hmm. I more got a sense of like, because it's implied like the whole way through that he killed her well not himself but he ordered that she killed. yeah he did so it gives you like a sense of his lack of morality but at the same time Ooh. i find it quite interesting that the language is quite charming and well written so it gives yeah. you like this contradictory thing oh very good yes I like that um so yeah so put that down so the tone is so charming Get back to my black because it's your point. It's almost like innocent because he genuinely believes that like he did the right thing. Yeah, ah, right. We'll, we'll develop a little bit. Yeah, so you know, as you were saying here, this tone it appears to be it's charming, which is at odds with the content. It's a bit like delusional. Sorry, say that again, please. It's a bit delusional. Ah, right, yes. Um, you could say, yep, yeah, delusional, yes. Why might he feel this way, though? Because this might not actually be the first Duchess that he's done it to. Yeah. So and he knows what he's doing by now and he knows he, yeah, how to play it. He knows what good he knows what he's doing by now and if he's done it before and he's got away with it what does this suggest to him if he can just get rid of a wife when he's tired of her for whatever reason you know have her killed have her bumped off and there are no repercussions very powerful yeah well how powerful what does it suggest he is 
because he didn't even do it himself. Yeah, but if, again, well, see, he doesn't, again, he's so powerful, he doesn't need to do it himself. What he does do is, um, ba -ba 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 -ba. yeah, let me just get my, oops, get me highlighted. Do, 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 do. What he does is this. He says, I gave commands, then all smiles stopped. He doesn't even have to come out. That's just inferred, you know. That's why she died. I gave the command. Her life is snuffed out just like that. If you can do that without any fear of repercussion, what do you not have any fear of? Think back to your inspector calls and what the Burlings think they are. Morals. Well, what should... What if you, if you have somebody murdered? What what? Who should you stand before? What what should have control over you? Does this not suggest that the, the duke feels that he or thinks that he is above the law? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, you're, you're always sort of dancing around it, but that's exactly what, what you've been getting at, Oliver, as well. Um, oops. And yeah, you talked about being immoral. Now, do we think, is the Duke immoral or amoral? Remember that if you are, if you're immoral, that means that you're aware of the moral code in society and you kind of choose to do whatever you do that goes against it, that breaks it. If you're amoral, it means that you don't recognise any kind of moral code within society. And so, you know, you just go ahead and do it because you're not aware of any moral code. I think he knows what he's doing, but he's just doing it to make himself feel better and to gain power, like, mentally. Ah, good. Yeah, I, I, I would kind of agree with you. Yeah, I, you do get this sense because you get the sense as well, don't you, that the Duke's kind of toying with the reader, um, who, who's kind of innocent. Yeah, yeah, uh, and so you do get this sense in this is how powerful I am, and this is why you need to be, you know, careful around me, no matter who you are, sort of thing, because I am that powerful, you know, that I can ride above the the, the norms of society. Good, 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 good. Thank you for that, Oliver. Good point. Um, Jess, what's your reaction to the poem? Are you there, Jess? Okay, I'm going to I'm going to come to you, Philippa. Then, as I'm not hearing from Jess, um, Philippa, what did you choose from the poem, or how did you react? Um, I I actually chose the last line. Notice Neptune, though, um, taming a seahorse. Yeah. Um, because it's kind of like he's trying to boast to the messenger. Ah, yes. He's he's actually just coming off as um arrogant, and it's a bit ironic. Yes. Oh, very good. Ooh, yeah. And again, it's that sort of close of Innsbruck again. Yes. Good. Um, so as it's been from beginning to end, we've noticed this boastfulness, this arrogance. And as you see, as it begins, because he starts off by saying, you know, oh, I got this painted by Fra Panhof, and who, who's an actual genuine, you know, great portrait artist from history. And just as he starts, so it ends. And he goes, you know, again, 
I think it's this Clouds of Innsbruck again. He goes, notice uh, Neptune, no taming a seahorse, thought a rarity, which Clouds of Innsbruck cast in bronze for me. So again, he's going back, pointing out things, telling us what to be aware of. Again, showing his, his kind of wealth and his power, which he sees as going hand in hand together. So yeah, that's a really good point to make. Thank you, Philippa. I think we've all been, I've been through everybody now, haven't I? Everybody's had their... Um, suggestions put in there that's really good now um this is another of the of the poems obviously in the power and conflict series um so my next question to you um and we'll just discuss this now you don't need to sort of spend time writing it down um I want you to tell me um how is the idea power and conflict explored in this poem Oops. Yeah. Um, what aspects of power do we see being contained in this poem? How would you define the, the, the power that is on display here? What do you think, Clem? What type of power are we seeing here? Like controlling. Yeah, good. Okay, so we're getting controlling power, yeah. Okay, Oliver, what about you? What sort of power do you see coming through in this poem? Um, well, I was thinking controlling as well, just because he decides who sees there and has, well, he's just in control of everything, but that's all I had really. Okay, anybody th think of any other power that is on display uh, in this poem? Yeah. Yeah. See, uh, it's it's this same one that I said yesterday because mm -hmm. I was kind of thinking about this poem. Um, mm -hmm. uh, power of art. Power of art. Oh yes. Now, what made you think of that? Um, it's kind of well. It's. I don't know how to explain it. it was, it's kind of like how um, how both of the poems use the arts as symbolism of um, their lives, if that makes sense. That makes more than sense. Everybody else in the room, let's hear this now. Let's give Philippa a round of applause for that idea. Let's clap now. Clap for not clap for Kairos. Clap for Philippa. Let's do it now. Very well done there, Philippa, yes. So we've got the, the, the statues in Ozymandias that we had yesterday, you know, and these huge, huge, huge edifices which are meant to represent his power, you know, and here. But um, between the two, yeah, it makes that great connections with the statues there, and it's a it's a it's a name dropping, isn't it, of the artists, the painters like Fra Pandolf with Clouds of Innsbruck again, who who was again um, a, a legitimate you know historical figure who who was an artist who worked in bronze and whatnot and carried out sculpting. So we've got that, and they're used to as an affiliation to show off um, the the power that they feel they have and again it's about that wealth you know this thing is so expensive only the rich and the powerful can afford these things so that's that's a good one to put into to the mix there philippa thank you for that anybody else see elements different elements of power within this poem yeah i've got one okay um, the power of immortality oh as if he's immortal to being punished for his actions yeah very good, yeah. Mm 
Yeah, good, good, good. Um, so we've got that, and again, that that's similar to again what we saw in Ozymandias. He thought that you know his 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 realm, his kingdom is going to last forever, and again, all his kind of statues and all that sort of stuff will be there to sort of represent his kingdom. Here, yeah, the the duke's got all his portraits on the wall of his trophy wives that have been and gone, as well as his works of art to sort of you know establish himself there. That's a really good point to make. Thank you. Community as well. Sorry. Like immunity from the <laughs> yes um, consequences. Mm. Yeah. Good. Anyone to add any other concepts of power that we see in this poem? Okay. Off you go, Oliver. I was thinking like the power of being jealous. Oh, yes, good. Yeah, because this is what motivates and drives them, isn't it? Yeah. You know, this is oh, this is why he does what he does. So, and again, if we're thinking about jealousy, jealousy is a form of what? It's the motive. It is a motive, isn't it? And is jealousy an aspect of love? You could see it as mm, you could see it as that, but then that could also under. It is, isn't it? It's a type. It's misguided love. It's, yeah. I mean, oh, carry on. Sorry, Claire. Uh, Claire uh, Charlotte. Um, I finished. <laughs> right. Sorry about that. Uh, but yeah, it's this whole idea, isn't it? You know, in his mind, it is kind of love. Um, but it's got all kind of twisted and a bit confused. Um, so that's another way that we can begin to look at it. Um, okay. Anybody get anything else? Maybe a greed. Ooh, in what way, Hugh? Um, well, he doesn't really want anyone else to see the painting except himself. And then he only really wants um, to like compliment it himself. Like he didn't like it when anyone else. Yeah. It. Yeah. Very good. Do you think that's because how she treated everyone compared to him? Elaborate on that point, Clem. I think that's a very good point. But I want you to build on it, okay? Okay. What do you mean by um, that? The way that she behaved to everybody else. So he obviously, by reading the poem, wants to be the main person in her life. He wanted to be the only one that got like the main amount of praise or something. Yeah. She, by reading it, you can see that she treated everyone equally. So like the guy in the orchard. Yeah. And everyone that gave her gifts. Yeah. So when he like covers the painting, he doesn't want to get anyone else's attention because of the past. He only wants to be the main form of praise. That is it. I mean, again, he wants to be the centre of her universe, isn't it? You say, and he cannot stand that she just behaves like a normal human being, that she's kind, that she's considerate, that she's complimentary, um, that she, you know, it's a good sense of humanity here. And he thinks, no, 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 you don't do that. And, it, and again, it comes back to that idea about being a bit possessive and being in control, isn't it? She is his thing. And as far as he's concerned, she belongs to him. And nobody else, nobody else should get the reaction apart from him. That is spot on, uh, Clem. Exactly so. And it's why it's why he has her killed in the end. She cannot stand how she treats everybody else so well. He feels that she, she should only do that for him. Yeah? Yes. That's why also said he'd never stoop. Yes. Yes. It's beneath his dignity, isn't it? I don't do that um, because he looks at all these things. And again, what it is, he cannot, he compares, doesn't he? He compares everything to, do, 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 later, he compares everything to, do, 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 a minute ago. Ah, yeah. It's, you know, his gift of a 900 years old name. 
you know, he says, that's what I've given to her. You know, it's, it's my antiquity, it's my lineage, it's my family name, my family rank. And he says, you know, good God, you know, how can she compare that to anything else that she is given, you know, as you say, by the gardener, by anybody else, um, who he says, you know, she 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 responds to anybody who just thanks her in, in the same way. You know, it's that idea, that's what really gets him, you know. Yeah. And I've got another one. Yeah. Um you could say that it's a conflict between how he like how the Duke presents himself to how like his true character is. Good. Build on that, yeah, carry on, develop that. Um, as if on the outside, he couldn't like how he said, oh yeah, I don't do that, I don't stoop and stuff like that. Yeah. Whereas on the inside, he's like really insecure because he's killed, obviously he's killed his duchess because she was giving attention to other people and not him. So he's mm. quite insecure about himself. Ah, yeah, that's, that's a good way to think about it. So he just portrays a really strong character when in fact he is. Yeah. Yeah, and that that is good. And again, it, it's that whole thing. It's almost like a, it, it's quite paradoxical. Um, you know, for for somebody who yeah, who and again, what I mean, you know, it, it exude power just means that they kind of live, breathe, eat, sleep. It. You know, they they are just. They know that they are, have power and they know how to wield power. But by the same token, as Charlotte's in there, he's somebody who's eaten through. And again, it ties in with the jealousy concept that Oliver brought into us. He's obviously eaten through with insecure thoughts because he's thinking, well, why should she react to somebody else giving her a bit of praise? She shouldn't. She should only. Be, she should only do that to me. And it, it, he can't. It, it's even. It's from the lowliest person in society. He cannot. He cannot accept this. He cannot tolerate it. And his only way out then is just to get rid of her. Uh, and that, 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 again, that's a nice, very sort of subtle um, idea. I hadn't hadn't thought about that before. Um, but clearly, yeah, the Duke has quite a. You know, on the one hand. You know, he, t he talks, and again, it goes back to what Oliver was saying. Here's somebody who comes across confident, you know, or being in the way that they're talking to us, all that sort of stuff. But, you know, deep at their core, they've got to be highly insecure. Good point. Good point indeed. Um, oops. Back. Anybody get anything else they want to pop in? Hi. Um, John said, um, could you just check the chart quickly, sir? Because I don't think his mic's on ah, right. mute. Ah, right. Ah, right. Okay, yeah. I'm just doing it now. <laughs> ah, right, yeah, because he just told me that his mic's not working. Hang on. Oh, right, yeah. Uh, so the one that John wanted to bring in. Um, was yeah, and again here it's about lack of power, yeah, um, and, and clearly the Duchess has no power. But if we think about what Charlotte has just said, in some ways she does, doesn't she? How does the Duchess have power? Because she's constantly on his mind. Yeah, yeah. You could also tie that one into the power of a voice because he's using his voice to be controlling and control what the reader's thinking. Oh, very good, very good. To give a biased opinion. Yeah. And how many voices do we hear in this poem? Literally one, just his. One. And so that makes this what type of poem? Monologue. Correct, yeah, we're back to our dramatic monologue, yeah, very good, very good. Do you know what, year 11? 
you are continuing to impress me lesson upon lesson. Yeah, this is really good stuff. You can give yourself collective pats in the back. But this is uh, this is really good. And what you're doing now, and it's quite interesting because we're doing this, um, you know, th remotely and all that sort of stuff. And so we we can do doing a question, and it's almost like yeah, that one to one. Quite a few of you now are, are, are being a lot more bold when I ask you a direct question now to come up with more sort of subtle points than you would do in the classroom. And that is really, really good to see and to hear. So keep doing this. Um, again, uh, as we keep coming back to, we've got to do evidence and all that sort of stuff. Evidence won't just come down from me putting my grades to you. Um, evidence won't just come down to what you put in writing. On a, on a question to me, it also comes out of what we do in discussion, and all these all these um, lessons get recorded now. So I've got bags of evidence that I'm getting with every contribution that you're all making to these lessons. So you know, brilliant, excellent stuff. Um, but it is, is, is that you know that it's the power of the, you know the voice, that, and it's the voice that dominates here, isn't it? The Duke dominates everything, and again, it's about the Duke trying to manipulate the way that we think, the way that we react. Very good, very good indeed. Right, 12.35, it's coming up to that time, isn't it? It's coming up to lunchtime, I do believe. Um, we're going to carry on um, with, uh, what do we call it? Last Duchess um, again tomorrow in the lesson. OK, I'll put it in the e-praise as well. If you could just listen to um, if you can click on the link and uh, listen to it, because again, it's a, it's a bona fide act again reading it and it's quite good. It'll give you it might help as well tease out a few more things that you might not have um, initially thought about when you've you've read through the poem yourself. You know, listen to the way that uh, Alfred Miller chooses certain words. Think about pauses that he might put into his rendition of, of, of the poem as well uh, and, and what's being said there. Um, and what we're going to do tomorrow is, again, we'll keep link, making these links between Ozymandias and, um, what should we call it, and last um, Duchess here, because what we will do eventually is we're going to look, and it's probably looking into next week now, OK? So just setting this up. What you'll do is answer that poem, you know, compare uh, how poets present ideas about power and Ozymandias and one other. The one other you're going to use is going to be the last Duchess. We're going to because they neatly pair together because we've got two characters who believe they, that they have ultimate power. One, their power just evaporates over time. Whereas with this one and my last Duchess, at the end of the poem, do we get a sense that the power, the Duke's power has decreased and diminished in any way? Or has it remained the same? Or has it got more powerful? That's what we'll begin to discuss tomorrow in the lesson. OK, so thank you for another very productive lesson. I enjoyed that. That was good. Good contributions all round. Um, well done. Um, I'll start putting some um, merits on ePraise as well, I think, now for that. Um, OK, and off we go and have our our lunch now okay and i will thank see you tomorrow you. okay thank you Bye. thank you thanks thank you. Thank you. thank you thank you